Why, hello there, I'm Professor Joel, and welcome to another episode of Planet Scooby Reviews. Today I am covering episode three of the third season of Scooby Doo Where Are You? And it is called A Scary Night with a Snow Beast Fright. And this episode originally aired on September 23rd, 1978. You'd think it might air a little closer to Christmas, but no, not so much. But I watched it around Christmas, and um, this episode sees the gang up in the Arctic Circle where they were invited by Professor Kruger for reasons unknown. And when they get up there, the professor is missing and apparently kidnapped by a giant snow beast. And of course, it doesn't take long for Scooby and the gang to run into this creepy snow beast. I don't have any trivia for this episode other than we see some totem poles at the village. And this, when I first watched it, didn't make much sense to me. Uh, growing up in Canada, I knew there wasn't uh, very much in the way of trees in the North Pole. Uh, there's something called the tree line where the trees start to get shorter and shorter. And by the time they hit the North Pole, they, they barely, they're not even like a foot tall. They're like seven to eight inches. And eventually they they uh, petrify. They turn from wood to to stone. So there there's no reason there would be totem poles up in that area. But uh, this is actually a clue. So uh, I can't complain about it too much. And uh, another funny thing about this episode is the snow beast size. It changes throughout the episode as well. When we first see him, he's 50 feet tall. But when they're in the cave system, he's only like uh, 15 feet or so. Cartoon logic. We all love it, right? Anyway, enough of my jibber jabber. Let's get to the review. The episode begins with a scientist trekking across an arctic landscape. We see him grabbed by a furry, giant-looking creature that is a cross between a polar bear and a Tyrannosaurus rex. We then cut to the gang who are on an airplane and they are reading about Professor Kruger, the man who was just kidnapped. Professor Kruger sure must want to see us badly to fly us all the way to the North Pole. I wonder why. I don't know. The gang are unaware of his disappearance and were invited to the North Pole to visit him at an Inuit village. On the airplane ride over, we get some super cool shots of some Inuit totem poles that gives Scooby a fright. The pilot mentions that the totem poles are the largest he's ever seen. At the Inuit village, the gang put on their skis and make their way through a blizzard to the village. When they get to the village, they find igloos smashed to bits like some giant monster stepped on them. Splitting up, they search the remaining igloos and Scooby falls into the giant monster's footprint. Daphne guesstimates that the monster must be 50 feet tall. I don't see it. <laughs> Whatever made these prints must be 50 an Inuit man with a dog sled approaches the gang and Scooby is smitten by the head dog. The Inuit man introduces himself as Manuk, the chief of the village. I am Manuk, chief of this village. We're friends of Professor Kruger. Where is he? The snow beast carried him off. It smashed our igloos and drove off my people. Our ancient legends say the great beast comes to life when man invades the sacred lands of the north. The great beast was angered when we built our village on sacred land. Now we must go or the snow beast will destroy us. Manuk explains the monster carried Professor Kruger off and scared the other villagers away when it smashed all the igloos. Manuk also explains the snow beast comes to life when man invaded the sacred lands of the north. So since they built their Inuit village on the sacred land, they had to leave. The chief points the gang to the professor's hut and they meet his assistant, Jean-Pierre Baptiste, who tells them to leave at once before he hops off on a snowmobile. Professor is gone, another victim of the snow beast. I was his assistant, Jean-Pierre Baptiste. I must go now before the creature comes back. I recommend for your own good that you leave at once. In the hut, Velma is a little suspicious, but she also finds a drawing of the totem poles. And before she can explain her theory of why this picture is important, the snow beast shows up and takes chase. Game over, man. It's game over. After kidnapping the chief Manuk, the snow beast stomps off. So the gang hop on the dog sled and follow it. At the totem poles, they discover black snow. They also hear a heartbeat noise coming out of the totem poles. The snow beast shows up again and chases Scooby, where Scooby hides until it leaves. Yeah. 
After a quick romantic encounter with the dog sled team lead, the gang follow the snow beast tracks to a cave. Inside the cave, we find it's really icy and treacherous, and the gang slip and land in a crevasse. In the pit, they find two tunnels with lights lighting them up. Scooby and Shaggy take one tunnel while the rest of the gang head the other way. The eyes of the monster! Okay, we better split up. Freddy and the girls determine the tunnels were carved out of ice. They also find a room with submarines and more black snow. Scooby and Shaggy have worse luck as they run into the snow beast who chases them throughout the cave system. Going down a set of carved stairs, Freddy, Daphne, and Velma find the professor and chief Manuk. What happened? Hey, what happened? Uh, I, I can't remember. Scooby and Shaggy also run in so everyone is reunited. Making their way back to the surface by the totem poles, Freddy sets a trap. Here they finally catch the snow beast on some slippery ice and it is revealed to be Jean-Pierre Baptiste. The snow beast was a mechanical monster. Inside a giant mechanical puppet. The totem poles were also revealed to be oil pumps. Baptiste came across the oil, so he hired a mechanic to build the oil pumps during the night, and he disguised them in the totem poles. He also used the snow beast legend to scare the Inuit away. Finally, the oil was carried off in submarines. This was until the professor got suspicious, so Baptiste kidnapped him. Baptiste came across the black snow while doing research for Professor Kruger. He took advantage of their legend about the snow beast to scare them away. Like the professor became suspicious. So Baptiste carried him off with his snow beast and locked him up. Then he and a driller from the Alaskan pipeline built the derricks during the night, disguised them as totem poles, and began smuggling oil out beneath the ice in converted submarines. And I would have made millions if it hadn't been for you meddling kids. I give this episode an 8.5 out of 10. I was originally thinking 8, but upon further viewings, the episode grew on me. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people will probably rank this a bit lower, but I think this is one of my favorite episodes so far, so far, in uh, Season 3 of Scooby-Doo Where Are You, or the Scooby-Doo Show, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, what I liked about this episode was the North Pole setting. I did watch this close to Christmas. I know this episode is airing in February of 2021, but I watched this um, around Christmas time. I, I used my Christmas break to kind of prep these videos and get them out um, so I wouldn't be too rushed during the regular work year because I'm off this this week. So it gives me some time to do some extra prep work and get ahead a bit. And uh, yeah, this Christmas episode, because it takes place in the North Pole, just uh, had all the feels for Christmas. Had I watched this in summer, my ranking might not be as high. And uh, of course, this episode is a little too familiar. In the previous episode, we saw submarines and again in this episode we get submarines and a cave system so a bit of overlap um but yeah season three of scooby-doo is a little bit tired i guess uh, even the writers would have admitted it they repeated a lot in previous episodes and we get that here but i can't really fault the episode for too much because i like the unique setting and i thought the snow monster looked really cool i like his design and i like how it was kind of like a giant kind of actually puppet or muppet uh, just a mechanical robot that could uh, snatch people actually and, and growl and it blew out steam and stuff. I thought that was really cool. Um, I doubt it was really practical, of course. Uh, being a robot in the winter, things are going to seize up. And uh, even in the Godzilla movies, it's just a guy in a rubber suit, right? And here we had some 50-foot tall monster. It's, it's not really going to happen. Cartoon logic, we all love it. And I also thought uh, there were some really stunning shots in this episode, like that flyby to the uh, with the totem poles. Like you could see the totem pole through the the pilot's um, uh, window of the plane. I thought that was really cool and creepy. And that scene where the gang are uh, they encounter the two tunnels and they look like giant eye sockets glowing. That was really cool. I also like the uh, seeing the gang in the winter clothing. That always kind of gives a half point. I was, it's just always cool to see them in their winter gear. And the Scooby love interest angle, I'm not usually really into like cartoon romances and stuff, but they kept it uh, cute in this, like really subdued and just kind of subtle. And I like that. Anyway, that wraps up my review. Uh, thank you for any likes and uh, subscribes and views and everything. It keeps me going. It keeps me motivated. 
And uh, a lot of you seem to be enjoying these reviews and helping my channel grow. So I appreciate everyone uh, who who watches and uh, leaves a like or, or um, just continues to watch. And join me next week when I will be covering that tar monster or the tar monster. Anyway, until then, stay spooky. for your own good that you leave at once. Now go!